Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. This week, we have John Sullivan with us, uh, one of our former students. The, today's podcast, we're talking about why it's important not to compare your journey to other people's. Everyone's got a story, haven't they, John? They have. They That's have. the thing. And everyone's circumstance is different. So it's pointless comparing your story to somebody else's. We've seen many different uh, student journeys as we've gone along. And the, the fastest one we ever saw, which we are fairly confident we could never replicate again, and it was all down to the circumstance, uh, was Jake Kenny. I don't know whether you remember Jake, do you, John? Or yeah, I do. He was like 17 years old. He had all the money. He'd won a scholarship. He had no work or family commitments. Uh, flying six days a week. Uh, luckily for him, um, he managed to have the same instructor for the majority of the course. He had no weather cancellations pretty much at all. I think he may have had one or two. And he did his exams alongside the training. And because all those things aligned, he managed to do his course in four weeks. In fact, it was just under four weeks. That's great, but you know, it, it's not replicable all the time. Right. Mm. In fact, I think you'd struggle to do it again unless you get, unless everything lines up. If you took any one of those those kind of scenarios out, I think we'd end up in a situation where it's not possible. So, you know, let's look at those things. You know, if he hadn't have had the cash, he wouldn't have been able to do the course at all. If he hadn't have had the time, he wouldn't have been able to do the course. If he had had other commitments like work or family, again, that would have meant that he couldn't train six days a week. You know, if he'd have had lots of weather cancellations like most people do, you know, our figure is about 40% on average for the year, um, then that wouldn't have worked out either. So it's there's a whole heap of things that have got to align to make that stuff happen. So I listen to a lot of students and quite often they're sort of saying, oh, you know, they went solo in 12 hours after I haven't been solo yet. I think the key thing is focus on your own journey. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, John, you, you, your journey was was very different. And do you want to talk about your sort of circumstances, as in? Um... Well, the history side. Uh, I started off at Sizedon actually. Yeah. Uh, at gliding, many many years ago, and never really committed to it um, to the flying side. I probably did about uh, two months worth of gliding. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to be honest, it was too early in the morning. It was five a.m. Get it? But um, yeah. but it was it was okay. So it was good experience. Um, and then uh, did some flying ones in the raft. Not, not too much. Just some private flying with with buddy buddy flying. Yeah. Again, didn't commit to it. And there's always been a reason not to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And then twenty winding way forward, twenty sixteen. Um, when uh, and we were in the old building. So I had I think four hours at that point with, mm -hmm. with Steve. Um, Again, dipping my toe, found every excuse in the sun. I can't do this. There's no. It's a bit like studying for a degree, which I did. You've got to do it. You say, right, I've got to do it, uh, yeah. and, and commit that time. You've got to have that hundred percent commitment to do it. Yeah. And if you don't, you'll never do it. And that's yeah. what I found. So I really sort of seriously started in yeah March 2020 yeah. was the first time I started. Got into it, then COVID hit. Yeah. Um, so there's no continuity. So during COVID, I studied. Uh, I did all the exams prior to actually flying. And I, I, there's, I made a point. I don't want to fly until I've finished all nine exams. Yeah. So that's what I did. And then started up again in 2022, doing one hour a week, um, which isn't enough. Mm. You can't get through the course of one hour a week. Maybe when you're finished and you want to do some casual flying, yes, but not, not for, for achieving this. It's that continuity you need. So you probably need two or three hours a week, I'd say, or build up to that at least anyway. Yeah. Um, so December 2022, I was at that point at two to three hours a week. And sure enough, there was some improvement, uh, without a doubt. So really, I didn't commit to it enough uh, at the beginning. My work, I'm running two businesses. I'm, I'm traveling a lot, uh, yeah. although I'm attached or next door to the flying school. Doesn't mean to say I can be there every day. You know, it, just, no. it was impossible. So it was quite difficult to get blocks of hours. And the problem with not flying regularly is that you, you will have a skills gap, 100%. It will start to yeah. fade after a couple of weeks. If you've flown once a week, you will forget by, by that time you come back. So you, you feel that you're recapping all the time. That's, that was one of the things I found. Mm -hmm. So by upping the hours, at least you're not recapping. You, you, you're moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, weather's a big factor. Every Once you pass or get through sort of um, the circuits and the landing and then start navigation, 
you're then uh, at the mercy of the weather. So not just the weather, you've got your work, your weather, your family commitments, financial commitments. There's lots of different, um, everything's got to line up to be able to achieve it. It's a nightmare. And we've seen the weather the last couple of years, I would say. Uh, generally, it's getting worse. It actually is. Actually worse. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Um, so you can't always guarantee, and I've talked to a lot, in fact, I've talked to most students here now. Yeah. Uh, they, they get despondent about the weather and the amount of time they have to recap, but that's just life. That's the way it is. Yeah. Um, so then come the skills test, I had to wait 14, well, it took 14 attempts because of bad weather. That was the, mm. the, the word, most frustrating because... Sorry, when you say four, that was 14 bookings, not attempts at the Sorry, test. 14 yeah, bookings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Due to weather. So that was annoying because I was in at 5 a.m. every time I was take the skills test. And I'm quite meticulous with the plogging. I'd take about three and a half, four hours to do it. Then to be, uh, then to find the weather's no good. So doing that thirteen times was quite frustrating. And students will feel that they'll feel frustrated. In fact, yeah, I was talking to a guy today. He said, "I'm really frustrated. I just yeah. cannot get my landings." I said, "I couldn't either." That was yeah, like yeah. one of the hardest bits I found was landings and diverts. Yeah, they were very very tricky. Landings, though, in my opinion, they um, they just click after a while. Yeah. And and you, you you say that to people, and they sort of say, "Yeah, but I've been doing it for weeks and weeks." It's different for everyone. You know, yeah, it's different for everybody. You just got to twist the process, I think. And it's, I think uh, so. There was one instructor I had here who he, he taught me a method, and and it works every time. It's mm. worth something, you know. Hold that uh, horizon. Don't, don't let it drop. Don't let it drop. Keep yeah. holding it, uh, and away you go. So that that was uh, that was good. Um, but what it can do is with all the delays is that psychologically you'll start to feel a bit despondent, and, yeah. and uh, as well as the frustration, you'll feel your confidence will go. Um, you get frustrated, so then your confidence is even worse. So if I had my time again, I would probably um, book a block of lessons, block a month, yeah. three or four months. But it's not practical. It's, with your business and things, you just can't, can you? No. It's, um, but that, that's why we say this. If you were comparing yourself to Jake, for example, you could get very frustrated very easily. Yeah. And, and even to the point where you think, I can't do it. But but the reality is his scenario was so perfect that it would never work for most people. No, you know, no, no. Um, You're absolutely right. I was talking to someone the other day who's done 28 hours and is despondent because um, the person hasn't gone solo. Yeah. I said, it's not a race. Everybody's no. different. Take your time. There's no rush. What, what What's the rush? Unless you're on a time constraint, if you're moving abroad or something, then, yeah, it's a bit different. Um, what I would say is don't panic. Uh, d- just keep at it, but but make sure you do the enough lessons, not just once a week. Once a week is okay if you've got less commitments because you can you can retain stuff because you've got time to think about it. I suppose. But I think yeah. I think your your circumstance because you're so busy, it's you've allowed so much time to do it. But if you hadn't got anything else to think about during that time, maybe you could revise a bit at home. So I think it is partly circumstance, isn't it? It um, is. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're you're considerably older than Jake was. I'm <laughs> okay. rude. rude. How only, rude. Ju- only just. Only ju- well, a couple of years. A couple of decades. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> four. Yeah, <laughs> it really is so, four decades. Yeah, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So All right. um, I'm leaving now. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. bye. <laughs> Do you think that made a difference? Because we've heard yeah. this a few times that some people are saying age makes no difference. I, from my experience, feel like I've slowed down as I get older. Yeah. Do you do you agree with that or not? Is it it's subjective, isn't it? I, I don't know. My job is the, the scientific, so I'm I'm using maths etc. all yeah. the time. That's why I found the exams not not that difficult, really, because yeah. of uh, the physics side. I do all that every day. Mm-hmm. But I can imagine, yeah, you get tired quicker. That's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, doing the navs, uh, I think down to Kemble. Yeah, I was quite tired doing the nav solo down to Kemble yeah. and back, um, and did a two hour flight couple of weeks ago and felt tired so i think physically you, you certainly are different yeah. Uh, mentally yeah it, because you're tired yes yeah. mentally you will feel different so you do do it young that's, that's the thing <laughs> don't put it off i think the the family commitments is a big thing as well because i know that because i've got young twins i go home and they just want your attention mm. so if you go home and you've got stuff to do and kids to look after, you, you need to allocate some time where you can just lock yourself away and study, don't you? Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So I definitely think a lot of it is around the circumstance that you're in. You know, if you've got more time available, less commitments, you're going to do better. I, I think. absolutely agree. Uh, I travel a lot and I stay in Premier Inns a lot and eat in a restaurant, always on your own because you're away. That's the time on a study. You have yeah. to fit it in. 
So over dinner, I'd take my books down every day and, and, and study, study, study. Um, the, the first one was interesting, the radio. I, I was talking to someone today about it, that practicing procedures, radio procedures, do it in the car. Travel to yeah. travel from work, uh, home to work, just just practice your radio procedures. and You have to keep those in check. Yeah. Um, what I did I find most enjoyable was, I found the navigation most enjoyable, actually, mm-hmm. um, which was... Great. Uh, the diverts were tricky at first, but you soon nail that. But that's from navigating and being able to get somewhere within a couple of degrees off yeah, track yeah. and yeah. actually on time. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 really fulfilling. You know, it's, it's very very good. Um, what, did, what did you find difficult about the diverts? I know for me it was the uh, being relaxed enough to spend a bit of time looking at your lap and doing stuff, whilst like allowing the aeroplane to move around a bit. Do you know what I mean? It's, exactly that. It's yeah, keeping yeah. the eye on the aeroplane and what it's doing, um, especially in orbit, going yeah. straight, not too bad, but uh, some, one of the instructors advised me to just take your hands off the wheel for a second, mm. you know, uh, kind of thing. Um, and, and it did work because the, yeah. the problem is when you're, you're writing down and you've got the, yeah. the yoke in your hand, you're, you're maybe pitching down or yeah, you're, absolutely. you're changing that. So, so that worked. And that's one thing. I had a lot of instructors, uh, which... It's good and bad. Mm. Uh, I think having the same instructor is probably not realistic, maybe mm. two or three. I had a lot more than that. Mm. But in a way, I, I liked it because I've, I've gained a lot of experience from having a lot of instructors. But it's not mm. ideal if you want to get through quick. I, I would recommend keep try and keep the instructor number Minimum, yeah. down. down I think, um, again, I think a lot of that is down to circumstance as well, isn't mm. it? Because I know with you there was a lot of times where, because you were next door, it was like, oh, the weather's good, I've got a bit of time. If you've got an instructor, that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah. you can quite easily rack up a load of instructors if you do it sort of ad hoc basis. Yeah. So yeah. I think some of that is like if, you, if you're if you able to plan in advance so that you know who you're flying with and you can try and limit that by... What I usually say to people is with this is try and fly on set days because mm. set instructors work on those set days. So oh, okay. that will reduce your number of instructors down. But it's you're inevitably going to get more instructors if you're very sporadic about bookings, if, you, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It's, yeah. Um, I remember you said to me once, you said, when I first started, actually, you said, you've got to book 90 lessons. Yeah. I was thinking, what? What are you talking about? 90 yeah. lessons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's actually true. You have to book yeah. way in advance because of yeah. the weather. You can't... You, yeah, absolutely. You, you can't avoid that. So no. that's quite interesting. So you said navigation was your favourite... Um, what did you um, find least enjoyable? Uh, least enjoyable? At first, the diverts. I didn't really enjoy doing that, but then you have to be able to do that uh, mm. to, you know, in case you're in trouble. Uh, but once you get over that and you're able to do that, it's just a process. And mm-hmm. uh, flying is about a process, I think. Everything you do in it is all about process, yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. keeping that process. So I didn't find that enjoyable at first. Um okay. Landings I didn't find enjoyable at all. No, at first. No, no. I did. I struggled with landings. I've got yeah. to be honest. You know, for for a long time. But it it did click in the end, which was. Uh, I remember doing loads of training on one five two, then quitting for several years, coming back realizing obviously I need to go solo again. But I bought the sharing bombs then. I couldn't land bombs at all. Oh, really? <laughs> it was just really difficult, and. I was thinking, oh God, is it? But it's probably, to be honest, I would have probably been that bad in a one five two after several years. Yeah, yeah. But changing aeroplanes as well didn't help. So the um, bombs just doesn't want to land full stop. Well, does it? Does it? it wants to fly. It's, it's you know it's designed to fly, isn't it? Yeah, one <laughs> one seven two. I was yeah. with, with one of the instructors, and it was a it was a real strong headwind. I think it was fifteen or twenty knots, and just couldn't land it and the instructor yeah. said this doesn't want to land does it and no, we just no. glide down the runway it's yeah. just uh, you, you probably find it one day when you get a really hot day as well and it, yeah. won't, it won't settle on the runway it's just like you just got to get rid of as much energy as you can it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's interesting um, so most challenging were the landings I would say landing yeah. is I'm just speaking to a student today he's finding it very frustrating he's, yeah. he's, he's very despondent to the point that you will think I'm going to quit yeah, yeah, I hear that. Absolutely. I've heard that from a lot of students. I'm going to quit. I just cannot land. Yeah, uh, I'm going to talk to me today. I said you, yeah. you've got to carry on. You just, just got to do it. That's what I t- I do tell them that when they start because I mm. do the consultations now. It's one of those things until you start feeling it yourself. You, you like you said about the ninety bookings. You were thinking, oh God, he's talking rubbish. You know? Yeah, but it's true. Um, so that's why we do the, this podcast really is to try and get information out there to people to try and make it a bit warts and all this is what it's like you mm-hmm. know 
Uh, and I think this is why this episode so important is that, you know, some people will inevitably do a lot better than you do because of their circumstance. Yeah. You know, yep. um, but it's your journey and you can't replicate their journey. So you've just got to focus on your own. Mm. You know? right. I do hear that a lot. People comparing, they do compare, and they say it's inevitable, isn't it? It's, 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 it's no it's point. Human nature. It is. It's, um, it's, you can't do that with flying. It's, no, you can't. Everybody has a different pace. They all. Everybody has a different pace. So let's have a look. If you did it again differently, you said that you would try and block some time out. As, uh, I would certainly do a block of a block of three months if I could, but it wasn't practical. Yeah. Uh, and when we do that block, you probably do it in the summer. But that's not realistic either. Yeah. I think it's taken me two years, but I'm glad it has in a way yeah. because I've experienced all weathers. Um, flying in the summer and then having to experience bad weather when you fly, yeah. it's not realistic. Um, but so I enjoyed that. I've enjoyed all the crosswind landings and you've got to learn how to crosswind land. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's, I, I find that if you only fly in really good weather, right, that's all you're ever going to fly in. Yeah. I've been really guilty of that. Um, if you start flying in weather that's a bit more challenging, that's still safe within your limitations. You know, a typical example of this is like people go flying around and they say, oh, yeah, because it, it says all the nines, you know, so they think, ah, oh, it's 10K fizz. It's 10K or more, Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's probably, in reality, 25K, something like yeah, that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So when they get into 10K, they're like, this is really bad, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's just 10K. Yeah. Um, and then when you get down to 5K, then it's like... I'm flying in a, a fishbowl, you know, so it's very easy to think the weather's worse than what it actually is, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. So. On my exam, it was nice in January. It was a mm -hmm. uh, very clear day, clear cold day, and the visibility was, like you said, 25, yeah. 30K. You could see yeah. for miles and miles. It was it was really, really nice. Yeah, absolutely. But you've got to fly in the bad weathers as well. Got of course to you do have. it. Yeah. Um, so what are your future plans now you're licensed? Um, well, I did a lap. I thought the lap would be quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it wasn't no. <laughs> yeah. because of all the navigations. The problem mm -hmm. with navigation is you have to rely on the weather. It's yeah. got to be good wherever you go. So in the end, it, it was taking, uh, I think Campbell was 10 weeks and Oxford was eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got to keep yeah. current. So all this uh, adds time to your, your course, but I was still yeah. on the lap all. So I'd upgrade to the PPL and okay. I'd like to get IR rating. So oh, nice. flying above clown would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Did I say clown? I meant cloud. Flying above clown. <laughs> so let's recap then on why we think it's important that we don't compare uh, your journey to others. So, I mean, the first one is we've got all students learn different, you know, differently. All students struggle with different aspects of training. So what one thing I've noticed is some of the really academic people struggle a lot with the practical stuff, but they absolutely ace the exams. And vice versa, some of the really practical people struggle a lot if they're not academic. So that's just two sort of mm. examples. But but then there's a, anything in between, isn't there? You know? Yeah. So, yeah. like you said, you're brilliant at maths. You mm. know. So the um, all the flight planning and stuff probably fairly straightforward to you. Yeah, I love it. You know, whereas some people flight planning is like the end of the world they're like oh god i can't do it you know it's what you've got to do it yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so. yeah so i think there's different different aspects um like we said earlier progress is mainly down to circumstance if you're flying less frequently you'll inevitably take more hours if you're low on confidence you'll inevitably need more hours um if you're struggling to finance the training you'll inevitably fly less often and then take longer which is going to lead to more hours and more cost and one thing we talked about earlier was don't be embarrassed either you know don't be embarrassed about what goes wrong and don't do it in silence you know speak to other people so you know speak to other people like you so other members of the school speak to them get their advice because you may have put that guy's mind at ease earlier saying look the landings it was the same for me mm -hmm. you know and likewise when you get further on in the course the people who are behind you you can sort of drag them up with you as well so yeah yeah totally agree i yeah. think it's really good to, to help each other out you know it's sort of holding each other accountable a little bit isn't it yeah you know yeah so anyway john thank you very much for coming on the podcast and sharing your experiences with us please do like and subscribe it really does help us grow the uh, channel and and get more content out there to people and we'd like to see you on the next one thank you very much thanks and i hope the check's in the post check, check. what check <laughs> i'm not going to pay you for this <laughs> if you like this episode please like subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode